Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the font packaging team buff, Christian Perrier. And enjoy. <laughs> enjoy. Well, actually, uh, originally, I wanted this to be a talk. Bits from the font packaging team. Um, I turned it to a buff, mostly because I didn't have enough material for a talk, to my opinion. And um, I felt like quite uncomfortable to make a talk without having all the material and knowledge and whatever. So I decided to turn it more into a font buff discussion about particularly with the font team members. Some of them are around, some of them are not. So I prepared a few slides as an introduction to font packaging and the work we are doing in the team, talking about the team, what are our challenges. And I expect a small discussion after, hopefully it happens, uh, about what's happening, and I did set up, just in case, a Gobi page, uh, which you can, I will give the details later on, so, okay, move. So, well, okay, uh, this is traditional in my talks, so you, many, some people expect that, my son may expect that, so he will see my SpongeBob in my talk, here we go, this is not a talk, but even in the buff. <laughs> If you want to play with the Gobi, I did set up a session with Gobi uh, with the usual recommendation for using Gobi. Uh, install Gobi-05, launch it, open gobi.debian.net, and you can open the page named debconf11 slash dc11 fonts buff. This is woohoo. This one's meant to be the Gobi. And this is it. So, in case after when we come to discussion, uh, in case there are ideas exchanged, I would appreciate if someone just take notes because I can do both things at the same time. So, what about font team? Well, the team, it's quite a big team. It was founded in 2007, uh, more or less before DEPCONF 7 in Edinburgh. Uh, Nicolas Spallinger and mostly myself, we talked about font. The fonts before, they were spread all around the archive, maintained by many people without real connection, without knowledge sharing, etc. So we decided, uh, along with Nicolas, with has a great knowledge about fonts, about fonts licenses, um, knows many people around the world who are doing font design, a free font design. So we founded this PKG fonts team, on which is hosted on Aliot since uh, four years, for four years. The goal of the team is obviously to maintain font packages and related tools. There are 44 members. I counted this morning, I was surprised. So many members, whoa. Indeed, about 11 are really active. Uh, may you around those people who are members of the font team, raise your hand, please. Thank you. We have DKG over there. We have Hideki Yamane over there, Arne Goje here, and Kanru Chen here, and myself, I think. Whoops, and Daniel Glese. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I wasn't seeing your hands, Daniel. <laughs> and here's a new team member coming. Welcome, Paul Weiss. And Carolina is not a team member. So, yeah, about 11 people really active, some maintaining fonts, some are maintaining font-related tools. This is about the team. Uh, what I didn't put on the slides, we mostly work as most team on the mailing list, pkg-fonts-devel on lists.elliot.org. 
Debian.org. And this list is set as maintainer for whatever packages we maintain or team maintain. I did a brief survey about font packages in the archive. We have 129 source packages maintained by the team. I was very surprised by this number. I didn't expect we are maintaining so many fonts. I don't know about you team members who are here, but I was expecting like 50 or 60, um, 129. We also maintain some utility packages, such as FontForge and related tools. Uh, mostly FontForge is one of the most important because it's used to compile several fonts. I counted all over the archive, which is mm, a little bit more difficult because what is a font package? Theoretically, a font package is in section font. So that's easy to count, but sometimes this is not a font package, this is a font utility package. So I counted 210 source packages in section font. And out of these, probably 156 are named TTF-something or OTF-something and fonts-something. Those are very, very likely to be font packages. <laughs> and always source packages. So more or less, the font packaging team is maintaining most of the fonts we have in Debian. I think we maintain probably the most used of them. So in short, well, these the characteristic, I would say, of these font packages, they are very, very well hidden. Um, we have few bug reports because there are no problem with fonts. Most developers use them. Everybody has fonts on his or her laptop, but we don't really care about them. We don't even care sometimes about the default font. I was asked uh, during breakfast, uh, but what is the default font in Debian? And the answer I gave as a long-standing packaging font team member is, I don't know. <laughs> and this is, I don't know. Um, we, really, this is something quite hidden for many people. But this is something very important for many other people, particularly those people whose language is not Latin based. This is what brought me to the font management, because internationalization, which is my main activity in Debian, is qu closely related to fonts. If we have translation to Uyghur, we need a font to display Uyghur. Otherwise, it's good. We have a translation and we can't use it. So that was, but this is something quite hidden, you know. So, and it explains also this thing that why the, the, the maintenance team is very, very international. We have many people concerned by Asian fonts, mostly. Um, because the need here is higher to display Japanese, I would take Japanese as an example, you need high quality font, well designed font for readability. This is probably the same for Chinese, only can confirm, I guess. So this is something really, really more, really important. And we have one more font team member, please welcome Tep. I will never try to pronounce Tep's full name, sorry for that. <laughs> uh, Tep is our, one of our developers from Thailand and maintains the Thai fonts, if I remember well. Basically, our work in progress, this is meant to be introduction to, to a more wider discussion. I said this is above, this is not a talk, so this will become above. We are working on removing this old thing named Deforma, Debian Font Management. This is something now we can define as old, useless, full of bug, and not maintained. So very, very good candidate for removal. The problem is that many packages were depending on Deforma, 
So this is quite a hard work to do and uh, work mostly led by Paul Weiss, who did set up some pages, some uh, tracking, some bug tracking, and uh, we did a lot of work during DebCamp. I mm, planned to put how many packages are left. Actually, I was waiting for some input by Paul. <laughs> we'll have the answer soon. <laughs> Live update, yes, definitely. Uh, by the way, if someone could monitor maybe the ISC channel uh, round room, I don't know if you know about this one, dash uh, depcons dash round room. If someone can relay questions from here. Okay, thank you, Andrew. Yeah, I see there are some contributions, so thank you. We are also working on renaming font packages. It sounds silly. Why do, you want, do we want to rename font packages? This is mostly a consistency with other distribution. For This is one of the reasons. Also because most font packages are named TTF-something, which means true type file. But some of them are providing open type fonts. So that sounds a little bit silly. We had a long discussion in the team about how to name fonts. And now we have more or less converged about how to name font. This is part of the font packaging policy we're working on. And the work is going on to rename the fonts packages. And 39 are done. I counted this morning. We have 39 font, fonts dash something. Uh, most of the work has been done by Hideki Yamane, who converted most of his fonts, about one or two every day during DebConf, I think, yes. Yeah, that was hard work. M more complicated than it seems. Renaming a, font, a source package is quite com not complicated, but you have to be very careful about the transition, of course. We are working or not enough working on the font packaging policy. This is a work uh, w w that was initiated, discussed by Nicolas and myself, and then Rogero Brito took it over. He's not attending DebConf. There is a document I can show you if I don't mess up with my stuff. We have a kind of draft document. I will not read that document, of course. It is meant to explain how a font package should be name, named, what guidelines we can give for stuff like Debian rules or things like that, etc. And et cetera. Mostly the, one of the points you can see this, point C, the work that Fedora has already done. Other distributions also worked on such standardization of font packages we need to exchange with them. It's, not, it's in a not completed status at this moment. There has been some work or tracking, or I don't know how to call that, about embedded fonts in PDF documents. Am I right to talk? This is, is uh, the, mostly the KG. You, you, you do some thoughts, if you want. Yeah, that would be make a f more interactive session if you can pass the mic. There yeah, there is a mic somewhere. Who has the mic? <laughs> yeah, that becomes a buff and not a talk. Um, so uh, I haven't actually done a lot of work with the embedded fonts, but uh, I understand the problem and I can try to explain it. Basically, the PDF can contain a subset of the fonts that are in use. And uh, one concern is that we may be shipping PDFs from other packages that embed glyphs from fonts that are not themselves free. Um, and uh, that can be a problem either because we're violating the license of that font because it may not even be redistributable, or it may be a problem because uh, it, it simply doesn't meet the DFSG uh, guidelines. So. Uh, you can run PDF fonts on any PDF that you find and have a look at them. It would be great to have someone do that in an archive-wide 
fashion to at least try to get a list of, uh, of what's available. Unfortunately, when, when you run PDF fonts, the things that are embedded, uh, they have a sort of mangled name. There's no guarantee that the name that is embedded in the font is actually the exact name. So there's some fuzzy matching that would need to be done to make sure we know what's going on with that. Is it only PDF files or s there are more formats that may, may <laughs> embed, embed fonts? I only know about PDF files, but I'm not going to make any claims about any other formats. Postscript? Hmm. Maybe Postscript? Hmm. Uh, SVG? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. So yeah, you, you doing that, it opens a big can of worms, you know? <laughs> it can become quite a large work, but that's probably part of the stuff. This is one of the tricky things, I think, with fonts. The tracking whether something is free according to DFSG or not free. Yeah, Paul? So, an update on the Defoma numbers. There's 18 source packages defending, depending on Defoma. Um, 18? Yeah, and f I think four Defoma backends, so four packages that need to be converted to use font config for finding out about fonts instead of using Defoma. Yeah, I, I didn't go into details about Deforma, etc. Basically, and one of the reasons I didn't want to make a talk is because there are some things I don't really know about all this stuff. But basically, Deforma became useless because all the magic that it was doing is now included in font config. So installing a font to make it work with the desktop environments basically means now you just throw up the TTF or OTF file. I'm mostly talking about vector, vector fonts, more than bitmap ones, you just throw up the TTF or OTF in usr dash slash share slash truth type, I think, and that's it. All the magic is going and you have the font in GNOME or KDE or whatever. That's basically the point. So the format becomes useless. That was the first point, useless. Non-maintained, definitely. You can look at bugs slash dot dbn.org slash deforma. You will be scared. Uh, and the code is horrible according to everybody who has looked into it. No, no offense intended for the original author, but nobody can maintain it except the original author. So embedded fonts is one of the topics. And another topic is all this stuff about tracking non-free fonts, license violations, and duplicate fonts. Several packages, often games, are providing fonts uh, with, the, with the binary package often. And sometimes these are duplicates of fonts that are packaged into font packages. So this is mostly one of the points. And freeness, when it comes at fonts, is very sensitive. You can find fonts all over the web. Some are called free, but you don't know what free, how, what license, what... Sometimes they are just a web page. Okay, this, slice, this font is free, uh, that's all. And some of them might be in some packages. Uh, there have been some issues with the Indic fonts, the fonts for the languages of India. Some of them have a status that's not completely clear. So this is also a, sometimes a sensitive topic. And packaging fonts, most of the time, the most difficult work when one wants to start packaging a font is to check about the license. I don't know a, much about font licenses, so I don't want to go into details because if I'm asked about open font license and why it differs from GPL or whatever, if someone knows in the audience, please speak because I am not able to explain these details. Please, Andrew. The main um, issue, as I understand it, with font licensing is that 
if your font is used in a document, there are situations where it can be embedded um, differently to the the GPL is you know got its its included code thing, but you don't want the font license to extend to the the uh, documents that use that font. Mm. So th that's the main reasoning that. behind the differences in the fonts. Yeah. Um, the f the free fonts are freer than that generally, though. So. Yeah. Paul? Paul Sladen speaking at the back. Yeah, in a, in a nutshell, if you use a font in a PDF file and it's GPL, it makes the PDF file um, also GPL. Also. And unfortunately, people's theses, which are normally copyright their university, obviously can't necessarily be GPL'd, and this basically means that a font becomes unusable. So virtually every single font license, open font, the um, UFL attempt and various other things, um, GPL plus font exception, they all have an additional exception, which is additionally, when, when this font is used in an embedded document, the font license does not apply to the document. Yeah, that, that's so. what's of the point. Yeah, this is a point you find in the OFL. Yeah, that's uh, something. So this is quite tricky stuff, and sometimes it brings some discussions and stuff like that. Well, I think I might have yet one slide. Yeah, that was a few nice places to look at. There, there has been some nice um, work. We may be failing at promoting it more. Uh, particularly, I went over the last days over the Debian font review. This, this is something we are hosting on our um, website. I can show this. Uh, not this one, this is our VCS. Of course, I lost that one. So I need to take it again. Hopefully, no. Oops. Okay. Let's type it. This is above. No, not this one. It's about spam review. Nothing to do. PKG fonts dash fonts dot Elliot dot Debian dot org. Yep, is it coming? Oh yeah. So this is an automated tool that goes over the Debian archive. I don't really know about the details. I'm not even sure about who wrote this at first. Maybe Nicholas or you? You were? You are the culprit for that, maybe Mike. So originally the script was written by uh, Miriam Ruiz. Oh yeah. And then Nicholas took it over and I've worked on it a little bit as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so first by Miriam Ruiz, then Nicholas Palinger and then Paul. So you can take, well, whatever font. Uh, is there one you want to see? A nice one, TTF dash. Oh, DKG and writing. Where is it? TTF, TTF. this one? Oh, yeah. And you get more details when clicking on the font. And, well, several font about um, family and all this stuff. And yeah, this is quite elaborated stuff. Um, to it's interesting to get a rough idea of what's covered by the font, et cetera, et cetera. I wanted to show the, I don't know, my favorite one is, uh, oh, is it? isn't here. For, oh, it's fonts. Now it's named fonts because we have many TTF dash something, but now we have fonts dash something. Fonts Kitsch Uyghur. And yeah, we I even have some missing stuff. This is meant to represent the Uyghur language. And many, many there are many fonts in this package. So we can easily check the differences between the fonts. Mostly with the, I, I don't know how about the algorithm, 
how it chooses which glyph to show. Because, for instance, for I Uyghur, the important part is to show the Uyghur glyphs, not the Latin ones. The people who want that font basically wanted to display Uyghur. Oh, Hebrew, if I want to take another example. Thank you, Leo. <laughs> and it's probably right to left language, I guess. Uyghur. Yeah, so that was a few nice places to look at. Uh, there is also another one. Yeah, please. So the images are generated using... ...for issues that uh, are commonly found in fonts like uh, glyphs that intersect with themselves and stuff like that. And we have also, I found, well, by... Oh, sorry, sorry yeah. for that, Kenro. Yeah, uh, please. So, uh, it, I think it's, it's possible to provide um, web phones. Yeah, we have so many phones in the archive, but uh, these days, uh, web phones is yeah, on the web page, you can use ah, the system ah. phone. Well, it has been discussed, I think, the KG page. Um, I don't know that there is um, an initiative within Debian at the moment to provide our own web-based fonts service, but now that you bring it up, I think that would be actually a really great thing because one of the things that web-based fonts um, can be used for is a type of font track, uh, type of surveillance and tracking across websites. Um, and if we were to run a service that was guaranteed to not track, then we could provide all free fonts for all web pages um, that people could potentially cache, um, which would allow automatic uh, font updates for any web page on, like, internet wide. So I think that would actually be a really neat service for Debian to try to provide, um, even for people who don't use Debian, if their browsers can support um, the various forms of web-based fonts. Yeah. I, I can't do it, but it would be great if somebody wanted to do it. So question opened. I noted that in the Gobi, but at the moment there is no effort. Peter, please. <coughs> One thing that occurred to me, I'm not sure if it's actually possible to do at the moment, but uh, with uh, Ubuntu and uh, browser plugins or multimedia plugins, uh, uh, when the browser tries to visit the page needing a plugin, it will pop up a window asking if you want to ex install the packages that support the um, meme type that's missing in the browser, similar with uh, video codecs and stuff like that. Would it be uh, possible and is it anything present in the moment in the true type library, for example, that when the font is missing, will it pop up something and install whatever is missing? Can we implement it if it isn't? But before Paul answers, at the moment, we obviously have nothing like this. <laughs> it's obvious for anybody, but... So this sort of thing is provided by a program that um, Fedora has been working on called Package Kit. Um, they um, publish font metadata in their repository metadata, and then the package kit tool has a GTK uh, plugin thing that looks at the fonts that a program is using and then pops up if there are some other fonts needed that aren't installed. Um, in Debian, we have package kit, but we don't yet have the metadata published in an appropriate way for package kit to use. Um, we now have the version of font config that Fedora added their patches to, um, so we could potentially work on that. Um, I think all the bits are there, but we're not using them yet. Yeah, th these are probably among those cool things to do with fonts and get further than we are doing now, which is mostly maintaining font packages. Andrew, please. Just a comment from IRC, um, that uh, there's a plan to add STF scripts to Deb Helper, like DH, SFD scripts to Deb Helper, like DH Auto Build. So. 
Okay. Can someone please go to the Gobi and not that? It would seem to be a statement on IRC, but uh, from uh, X byte MX. Who's that? Can someone do a slash who is on that? Tony person? Palmer. <laughs> or introduce him or herself, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, okay. Well, if someone has a Gobi opened and take notes, it would be ni nice because I can do in the same time. So, yeah. There, you, you see there are IDs floating around and my point, my own point, would be to go further than just font packaging. But for that, it needs people who have quite some skills in fonts, much further than mine because my skills in fonts is basically knowing what a font is, that I can open it with FontForge. I know about packaging fonts, and that's nearly it. So it's a little bit small for leading some efforts and uh, drawing things, you know. Leo, please. A more general question. I maintain a few fonts for Hebrew and Arabic and I was thinking to move it to the group repository. Um, my question is, is everyone in the group just maintain his own fonts, or it's actually a, co a, a teamwork which everyone can maintain everyone's font? Because this I'm trying to, to, to find out if I just do the same work on another group, yep. because I do it in Debian Hebrew, Debian Arabic, or would I actually get help from others? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, other f team members, you, you, you give your opinion uh, on this, but what's happened up to now is we do put the team in the maintainer field in Debian control. So the bug reports go to the PKG fonts devel mailing list, which is open for posting. And we put in uploaders those people who are more responsible for the font. So there is a kind of loose priority of those people mentioned here. But that's nearly it. So uh, the agreement in the team is that, yes, we can, anybody in the team can maintain another font. But for instance, I will probably leave Hideki Yamane maintain the fonts. He's maintaining most of the time. He's working stuff on that, and I will not interfere with his work, except if we, well, and if there is something wide or if has no time for that or something like this. So it's very open, and we can probably cope with everybody's needs. If you prefer being uh, really responsible for this font, uh, it can be still maintained in the team repository and benefit from the team discussion, and that's all. The credit or who is the yeah. maintainer, which is who is maintaining, who is uploaded, it's actually about teamwork and benefits from moving into the team instead of doing it by, by myself on the side. For the maintainer, I'm not really... Sure, there is a big benefit, honestly speaking. One of the benefits is that we can know uh, that at least someone will feel responsible for the font if something has to be done. Take as example the deforma removal. It was very easy for those who were in the team repository because we just made the changes and re-uploaded the package, and that's it. For other fonts, we have to propose an NMU, et cetera, et cetera, to send a patch, et cetera. So that makes things more complicated. The benefit is more overall Debian than the maintainer him or herself. It's still a good answer. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, about the uh, deforma removal, uh, uh, is there anybody knows about the uh, status of the latex and the uh, ghost script? Uh, you mean about what uh, we are trying to achieve and make? I did, I'm not sure I did uh, really get the question. Okay, uh, the def deformer was used to configure this, this font package in, mm. in the 
latex and the uh, ghost script. But I, it seems uh, now the ghost script can use the phone from phone config, but we still need, need some uh, files in the etc CID map file. Maybe Paul has a better answer than me. <laughs> um, so for text, I don't think it ever supported Defoma at all. Um, GoScript had had better support for font searching under Defoma than it does now. Um, that needs to change. Maybe someone would like to write a script to generate the files, but um, GoScript itself needs help. It's where's Jonas? He's not here. Um, so Jonas is maintaining GoScript along with the printing team now, and he's quite overloaded. So if people want to help maintain GoScript, that'd be good. And it does need better support for font config. Currently, it doesn't have that great um, support. But other distributions like Gentoo and stuff, I think they have patches that we could use to make that better. I don't know if that answers your question, but I think Paul has a better answer than me, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, basically, the point of the team really is to bring the common knowledge in Debian to the team and share that knowledge because of these hidden nice things that are going around. It also helps identifying unmaintained stuff. Yeah, uh, DKG, please. We have five minutes left. Um, just in the spirit of uh, throwing out interesting things that I think the font team could do, uh, in addition, I mean, along the lines of the web fonts um, or the PDF uh, looking for embedded fonts, um, I know that Inkscape in the latest version now has uh, SVG font uh, capabilities. But it's very unclear, to me at least, how to use them to generate a font. Um, and I, I really like the Inkscape interface in general. And I wonder if anybody is interested. Um, it, would be, it would be, I think, a, use, a useful uh, thing to do to look at how Inkscape SVG fonts work and maybe to feed back uh, suggestions upstream to Inkscape about how they could improve that interface and maybe write up a tutorial about uh, how to how to use it? I believe the uh, the Sturba development for the Inkscape SVG font support um, in a Google Summer of Code project that's on at the moment. So that's I think it's probably a moving target right now. Maybe Paul, you had you have something to add? No. Okay. Anybody has other comments or whatever topic we can fit in four minutes or something? Just to clarify that point from IRC earlier, the person was asking whether there was a plan to add SFD scripts to Deb Helper. So to add SFD scripts? SFD scripts. He says that. Um, when a font upstream with SFD is used to build a Debian package, the maintainer must add a script to make a TTF or other font type. I SFD is the um, font f forge mm. format. Ah, okay. Yeah, to, to, to provide a kind of standard uh, script to build a, a, f a font from an SFD file. Yeah. So. I think that's the domain of upstream. They should be providing a make file, which DH will automatically use. Um, yeah, like there's not much point in Debian having a specific Debian specific way to build fonts. We should just use the upstream way. Paul. It, 
does bring up the whole question about to what extent that fonts actually want rebuilding from source hmm. if the source is available. I'm, I'm going to... I appreciate I have bias here. I open hands. I work for Canonical at the moment. Um, and we make a font called the Ubuntu font family, um, which is going to get pillared for being non-free and et cetera, and made by Canonical and made by non-free tools and stuff. But we, we looked around for a long time trying to find a font house which would make a professional font using only Inkscape and FontForge. And there weren't, at the time, any realistic possibilities of large enough companies that could do kind of five scripts and 13 weights um, using the free fonts, uh, free tools. So we have, um, theoretically, a free, a free and open font, but built with Windows tools, which, of course, in Debian, we can't rebuild from source. Now, because we've got source code, that's a worse situation than if we just had the TTFs, because if you've just got the TTFs, the TTFs in many cases are considered source code. Um, but because we have got source code, but we can't rebuild from it, so it's definitely not something that can go into main at the moment, and it can't um, because we can't rebuild it from source. Um, but it does open up that question about to what extent we do want to rebuild, if there is or if there isn't the option to. Is it free? Should we actually be more strict or less strict? Or yeah, th this is kind of a discussion we had already in the list. And some of fonts we rebuild from the source, some we don't. It's not comp not at all standardized, definitely. So I, yeah, maybe la one last comment probably, and we will probably close up. Uh, so. I, I think that those fonts should, uh, that we can't rebuild from source belong in Contrib. Um, and I, I understand that, that Canonical tried to find a font house that would use free tools uh, and were unable to. Uh, and I wonder if we can use uh, this as a moment to say, okay, well, can we, con can we transition this font from a non-free tool chain to a free tool chain? So that we can put it in in free in main. I would like to see it in main. And if we could help the font house that created it use free, you know, have a have a free source to build it from, I think that would be good. So if we can use our leverage to push towards a better, more usable free font tool chain, I think that's a positive result. Yeah, that that's that's what I would like to keep as a final comment. And uh, one of the goal we can have is to promote the use of free software for creating, building, et cetera, font. And this is one of the reasons, personally speaking, that I prefer rebuilding from source with FontForge. It also <laughs> helps in uh, finding nasty bugs in FontForge itself, which is, I think, a good thing. Well, uh, I have to conclude this both. I am amazingly surprised how live it was. I was very scared about uh, having a non-live both. I hope I didn't turn this too much into a talk. And I would like to thank you, everybody, for making this a live both. Thank you very much.